Good morning, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Apostle Emmanuel Okai is my name. Welcome to Spiritual Teachings tonight. Please, if you join the live, kindly share. This evening, we are here to share the word of God to know spiritual things concerning our life so far as our Lord Jesus Christ is concerned. So if you join the live, kindly share and be a blessing to someone. God bless you, Kimberly. May the Lord bless everyone that joins the live. So join the live and share. Join the live and share. Tonight is another night. Yesterday was a powerful night concerning our souls as Christians and today to be continue. One thing I want you to know that there are souls that are in cage. And this evening you are going to see if your soul is there and how you can bring out your soul from that place. So join the live. Before I start, there is this. This is, is a banana or a plantain leaf. This is a plantain leaf. Yes, I'll show you what is being used for. What is being used for against souls spiritually. Also, I'll show you this. This is called Aiden, Aiden fruit. That is A I D A N fruit. It's called Aiden fruit spiritually. I'll show you what is used for soul and against soul. So as you are here to learn something from the Lord, please kindly share the life. Invite a friend, tell a friend to tell another friend to join us and be a blessing to them. Yes, it is better for us to share the truth, the gospel, and also to bring souls out because there are a lot of souls that are ignorant of, I mean, the, 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 the plans of the, of the enemy. So let's worship the Lord. And as we continue to worship the Lord, we get to a place to share the word of God. Yes. By the way, as we continue worshiping the Lord, please um, share the life. Share the life. Share the life. Tell a friend to tell another friend to join the life. That Apostle Emmanuel Okang is here. Yes. Shri Kabrali Shakaraba. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Yes. Share the life. Share the life. Be a blessing to someone. Be a blessing to someone. Holy Spirit, have your way. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, Holy Spirit. Tell a friend, invite, invite friends, invite friends to your messenger, invite friends, tag people with this life because the devil has has deceived her for a very long time, and this is the time we need to know the truth and nothing else but the truth. Yes, nothing else but the truth. So join the live by sharing it inviting a friend telling them to join the live tag it to people yes and this is the only way you can use to support the work of god this is the only way yes this is the only way you can use to support what god has i mean tell us to to do for his kingdom yes lord mm. Step as a show. Mm. Holy Spirit, she can brand it, she can da, da, da. Have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way. Father, we bless you. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Ah. Share the life. Tonight is a ninth concerning souls, your soul, your soul. Yesterday I said a lot of things about souls and 
today we'll be taking it to a different angle yes yes a different angle it's just that the the, the preaching of other men of god is different from some of the men of god and there's nothing different about it though because we are preaching the same christ uh -huh, the same gospel but there are some secrets uh, the kingdom of god is about spirituality yeah let me tell you the kingdom of god is about spirituality so we must not be ignorant of what the devil is doing unless you don't know yes unless you don't know but if you know you know hallelujah let's pray father in the name of jesus we thank you god for bringing us here this evening father we pray that may you open our heart may you open our mind may you open our soul may you open our ears to listen to whatever that you have given to us and let every word that we declare let every word that we preach be a blessing into the heart of your people and father let god transform them deliver them with your power in the name of our lord jesus christ thank you lord god for doing it for us for doing it for them tonight amen amen ladies and gentlemen souls are in cage I am preaching a message by the title, Souls are in cage. Are you aware that you as a human being, you were created with two things, with the material and the immaterial. The material is the dust God formed you with the dust out of the ground and it breathed into you and you became a living soul a living being by you becoming a living soul a living being which means you have a component that cannot be seen the unseen component that is the spirit and the soul but hear me the soul is between the spirit and the body and we have to know that the soul is so precious before god and before even satan and the bible says that in ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4 god said that behold Every soul belongs to me, both father and son, both mother and daughter. Every soul is talking about human, not um, different in or any kind of God, uh, thing God, God created. So God accepts his sovereignty over every soul affirming that both parents and children are his possessions. And in the divine narrative, the adversary of the Almighty, eh, the enemy of God, who covets these souls, seeks to ens I mean, ensnare them within the confines of, of its own dominion the devil also is interested in you and wants you into his what kingdom his own dominion as a realm of darkness so this quest for human spirit is driving by inherent value and riches of the soul an intangible entity of immense worth that the adversary relentlessly pursues 
our soul. Now, following the narrative of man's disobedience, eh, instigated by the by 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 the deceiver, that is the, the devil, the soul embarked on a tumultuous journey, shrouded in darkness, yearning for light, yearning for, for, for the illumination that would guide it back to the creator. When a soul lost amidst the shadows, finds the beacon of light and returns to God, there is joy or there is joy in the celestial realms, the angels becomes happy. And so when you check the Bible, eh, this is a testament of Luke chapter 15, verse 10, where it is said that the heavens burst into celebration upon the recovery of a soul once lost. So God is looking for souls. The devil also is looking for the same soul. Are we together? Since the inception of sin, eh, the instigator, the originator, the instigator, the adversary has been relentlessly targeting human souls within the battle or within the spiritual battlefield. As individual venture through the stage of life, the enemy's effort to ensnare the mislead this precious spirit into his kingdom, which are relentlessly. Hey, Apostle Terence, oh, God bless you. Great man of God. Thank you for joining the live. It's a pleasure meeting you. I'm much honored and grateful. All right. So souls are very rich. Very, very rich. Whereby God is interested in us, in what he has put, the immaterial thing. But let me say this. God is not only interested in the immaterial thing or you only. The devil also is looking for what God is looking in you. The Bible says that he created us for his glory. And no wonder. The Bible says that for all our sin and fellowship of the glory of God. So Satan is looking for your soul to just counterfeit it, to destroy you because he is the, he, 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 he is the enemy to God. And so far as Satan is the enemy to God, eh? we has become his enemy as well. So no wonder David put it in a nice way. And he says in Psalm 142, stanza 7, he says that, Bring my soul out of prison, that I may confess, praise, and give thanks to your name. Are we together? If you read the and KGV version, it says that break my soul out of prison. Amplifier will say that break my life out of prison. So your soul is your life. Hallelujah. So Samis, the Samis uses the metaphor of soul being in the prison to express a state of deep distress. I mean, constriction or captivating within itself. Ladies and gentlemen, in this world, hmm, in this world, we face challenges that pierce deeper than physical. They attack our very soul. In this life, in this world, is more of spirituality than physical. There is nothing on earth that does not happen in the spirit before it will happen on earth. So yet, we are reminded that 
every breath we take, every step we make, and every victory we achieve is a gift from God. So before we can truly be free, we must look to the heavens for strength and guidance and protection. Some individuals carry emotional, hmm? some individuals carry psychological or spiritual barriers that can be metaphorically described as their souls being in cage. These barriers, I mean, often result from the past experiences, from the belief or deep-seated fears. So the Bible says that in Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 says that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. So there are a lot of people's soul that has been broken. There are a lot of people's soul that they need, they, they, they need freedom and liberty. There are a lot of souls that are in prison and they need to be open, to be set free. This evening, wherever you are, I pray upon your soul in the name of Jesus that may the power of the Holy Spirit and may the hand of our Heavenly Father release your soul out from anything out of i mean psychological states from emotional from your past anything from fear in the name of jesus christ you see ladies and gentlemen you need to consider certain things that the devil is looking for you and consider your soul as a prisoner. Because if you don't consider your soul as a prisoner, you always be there, not doing nothing for your soul and for your life and for yourself, for you to come out of where the enemy has put you. So consider your soul as a prisoner, shackled by despair, doubt and darkness. So God promises liberation not just from the external chains but from the inner bones that weighed you down so the bible says that he sent his spirit to heal and restore to open the doors of our heart and set us free so no wonder if you read the bible in second corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 the bible says that cast it down argument and every high thing that exists itself against the knowledge of God, breaking down every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So our thought have the power to imprison us as much as any physical cage. So the cage that I'm talking about is not something physical i'm talking about spiritual cage whereby we cannot see with our eyes there are a lot of christians they do they give their tithe they pray they worship yet their soul is in the is in the demonic cage the moment you accept jesus christ as your own and personal savior you are being delivered from any kind of curse, any kind of attack, and you are being protected, and you become a, a new creation. But as the journey starts, then the enemy will start praying tactics on you, and there he will snare you. Hallelujah. So we, we, we must cast down the strongholds of doubt. We must cast down the strongholds of fear. We must cast down the, 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 the negativity, aligning our minds with the truth of God's word. We are moving gradually to the top. When we do, 
we find that our thoughts are no longer our captains, but our servant, leading us closer to the heart of God. So listen and listen carefully, ladies and gentlemen. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible says that, Brothers, we do not want you to be uninformed. Uninformed. We do not want you to be uninformed. Am I communicating? Listen. Don't be ignorant of Satan's device. We are at war. Satan hates us and we want to destroy each and every soul that is precious before their eyes of God. So we must be aware of the devil's devices, his weapons, his studies, using his people, his agents, and his, I mean, medieval spirit that follows him to destroy and afflict the souls of humanity. I said earlier on, the devil hates God and he hates God's creation. The devil tries to destroy every man by trying to get us to destroy each other. So the Bible says that in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, says that in order that Satan should not outwit us, we are not unaware of his schemes. Blessings to you woman of God. And the Bible said in Luke chapter 22 verse 31 says that God, Jesus Christ said, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat. I'm not coming to start preaching. So share the life. Our souls are in cage. Some souls are in cage. It might be you, your brother, your sister, your father, your mother, or a friend of you. Listen, pay attention here. Because this I'm going to I'm coming to bring out deep revelation how they operate on our souls. Our lives are deeply intertwined with the spiritual realm. As John the Baptist acknowledged in a nice way. In John chapter 3, verse 27, he said that a man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. That is a perfect statement. This verse highlights the reality that everything we experience in the physical world has a spiritual origin and significance. So according to John, eh? our experiences in this world are preordained in the spiritual realm where blessings and curses are first decreed before manifesting in our daily reality. When we talk about soul being entrapped, we are not referring to the physical body but to the spiritual state of being. So, souls that are engaged, eh, this imprisonment is a spiritual bondage that may not be visible to the naked eye, but significantly impact our existence. The soul, when confined, can suffer in the kingdom of darkness ensnared by the evil vo and the evil uh, forces. So such a condition doesn't just affect the intangible aspect of life. It can lead to tangible consequences in the physical world, such as your health issues, such as your financial struggles and relational problems, and so on and so forth. So the Bible says that in Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 says that for, for, for freedom Christ has set us free. We, as we stand fast therefore and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. This evening wherever you are, I ask freedom for you. 
I ask total liberation upon your soul in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, anyone that has been captured, anyone's soul that has been captured, this is what happened to the person. When the gospel or any spiritual messages is shared with such individuals, they might not readily accept or understand the message due to their in God internal what, restrictions by the evil for forces. And this has to do with a soul in a cage. And the, the metaphorical cage can prevent them from fully hearkening and listening with intent to understand and possibly act upon the gospel or the advice or the godly advice given to them because their soul is being captured into the cage. So David says that, bring my soul out of prison, bring my life out of prison, that I may confess and praise you and worship you. When souls are in cage, they may experience undue hardship, repeated failure, much like the Israelite in Egypt who cried out for, for, for freedom. So the Bible says that in Exodus chapter 2, verse 23. Now it happened in the process time that the king of Egypt died. Then the children of Israel groaning. Are we together? Because of the bondage, they cried out, and they cry, and the cry came upon God because of the bondage. God is ready to deliver his people. In the era when the Israelites dwelt in Egypt, their freedom was unattainable due to the oppressive rule of the of, of Pharaoh, which seems intricately linked to Rivana. So Pharaoh with Pharaoh, Rivana with Rivana with Pharaoh. And one thing is that the Israelites couldn't run away because they are they are still under the bondage of Pharaoh. Do you know the reason why they couldn't run? One, they are mentally slipped and spiritually their soul has been captured into river now so the river now has become a god that is called the happy to the egyptians that they are the people that are putting all these the israelites into bondage and the river now was it merely a river it was a deity that influence and watch over the Egyptians and Pharaohs every and, and, and every move. So without the river now, the far uh, the Pharaoh's dominion would crumble, just as the river now is a significant. Without Pharaoh, it becomes a god. So this is what happened to the Israelite and the Egyptian. God said to Moses and Aaron, go to the river now, where Pharaoh comes and bath every morning. And the Bible says that, God said, cast your rod into the river now. And this is what happened. Listen, the people of Israelite couldn't run away, couldn't serve the same free, even though there was no fence on the land of Egypt. There was no fence because they were being captured under the power of Rivana. And Pharaoh is the one that holds the power of Rivana. And Rivana is the God eh, to Pharaoh. Do you get it? This evening, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Whoever has caged your soul, 
whoever has trapped your soul for you not to be free from your marriage from your business from anything that the enemy has taken from you i pray and ask for the thunder of god to crush them into pieces for yourself to be set free for your life to be free to go and worship your god to go and do what god has laid onto your heart to do in the name of jesus christ because when your soul is being captured you are nothing when your soul is being captured when your soul is in the cage when you're under a bondage you are nothing are we together so we have to understand that the devil is looking for your soul ladies and gentlemen and this went on and went on and went on and went on until the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hard. He refused to let the people go. So this is what I want you to do. Go to the river now and turn the river now into a different thing. And the river now turned into a blood and the fishes in the, in the now, I mean, they all died. This act was not just a display of God's power over nature, but a, a, a symbolic breaking of spiritual bondage that the now and the Pharaoh imposed on the Israelite. I don't know about you. Your life is depressed. Your life is a setback. There is a financial challenges in your life. The Bible says that the blessings of the Lord makes one rich and he had no sorrows. When our souls are enslaved, we may face financial challenges. We may face setbacks that prevent them from experiencing the fullness of blessings God's intent. Romans chapter 8, verse 38, 39 says that, For I am convinced that in neither death nor life, Neither ages nor principalities, nor the things present, nor the things to come, nor powers, nor the hate or the death, nor any other creator and created thing eh, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. But spiritual captivity can also lead us to stagnation and difficulties in relationships including marriages as unseen forces work against the unity and the love that god desires and these trials from financial hardship to emotional distress and even physical ailment and eh, can seem as a reflection of deeper and unseen realm I am i communicating with you you see, so understanding this spiritual realm and its effect is crucial. It's very, very crucial because it empowers us to seek deliverance and to embrace the full blessings of God's intent for us. Just as we might need keys to unlock physical chains, we need spiritual insight to free ourselves from the shackles of the unseen. Hallelujah. So, witches and wizards often depicted as minor demons dwelling in the human body, operating within the shadows of, of this kingdom of darkness. Get this. Without spiritual discernment, their true identity remain hidden because the one operating in your life, you must know how the person looks like and the most amazing thing in in life is that you don't know the favorite things about your enemy but your enemy knows your favorite thing your your desire your favorite color your favorite food anything that you like the enemy knows it but you don't know what the enemy likes and whereby you can use that against them. So this is how they, they operate. When witches and wizards or evil spirits, especially witches, they want to 
operate in your life to capture your soul mm? at night when they set out to perform their malevolent deeds eh? they don't rely on a conventional means instead they use demonic object and peculiar tools something like long brooms and plantain leaves to fly and carry out their operations listen you see this is a plantain leaves hmm? this is a plantain leaves is a plantain leaves is a plantain leaves and do you know how they operate with this when they come out from their body with their soul and their spirit one thing is that they don't put on sandals especially the witches and the wizards they don't put on sandals aquatic master or evil person will not put on sandals or slippers when they are going on operation and when they come out from their body and they move and they are coming to your place this is what they use this is a plantain leaf and it is very very powerful it's very powerful is it i said this to you that not every man of god will teach you this mm. they don't know if they don't know they don't know if they know they know i mean i'm i'm a, I'm, I'm i'm more than a man of god i'm a spiritual man i'm a spiritual person so i have to teach you this to know when you see some in dreams or physically or spiritual you not be just gazing at it so this is what they they operate they operate through and they put this thing on the floor eh? and they will stand on it spiritually i'm not talking of physical what i'm saying here is spiritual not physical and the physical thing is just what has happened in the spiritual so when they put it on the ground they will stand on it and all of a sudden with their power you see them flying on this have you seen a witch flying before <laughs> no i have seen a witch flying before and i can identify a witch if you're a witch or a wizard and you come before me god will, should, will reveal it to me yes this third high is very sharp so they operate in this now when they operate on this eh, they, they they use this as a means of transportation to visit whoever they want to visit and in the spiritual realms when they get to you to, to to your place where you are one thing is that people wonder why the witches and wizard comes into their room after they have prayed yes after you have you have prayed you apply the blood of jesus christ in your room do that every day this is called charcoal this is called charcoal this is called charcoal eh? this no light can penetrate this is full of and um black yes so no light can penetrate this you can use these eh, as another means to stop the witches after you have prayed on it after this just a common charcoal after you have prayed on it and you can break it into pieces in all your four corners you pray after praying you put it at the four corners of your room eh? just for seven days and no witch no wizard not even an evil entity can appear into your room and disappear when you try to appear you will not be able to disappear this is a powerful whereby a lot of people don't know so they when they when they come in the night with this 
eh, spiritually, they place this leaf on your on, on you on your body. Spiritually, I'm not talking of whilst you are seeing things physical. You open your eyes, you see your television, you see your picture frame, you see your your bed, your your lamp. No, I'm not talking about that. This will happen to you spiritually, and they'll place it on from your forehead, from your forehead to your leg, and when they place it, they will command and call your name and your soul will enter into the leaf this leaf is very powerful you can even use this leaf plantain leaf eh? you can even put it you yourself you can even put it on the on the ground open it open it and stand on it for 30 seconds without not opening your eyes and meditating you all of a sudden you see your soul at a different place now when they capture your soul into this I, I'm, I'm teaching they capture your soul into this eh? then they will carry you and they'll sit on you as as they sat into your place and they'll take you to their camp are we together hallelujah whilst you are asleep and they don't do it whilst you are not asleep because when men sleep they fall into deep sleep then the devil comes according to the word of god you see and as i said earlier they use demonic object and different kinds of things to 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 fly and to carry the operations and to capture our souls now, while their body lies dominant in their rooms, their soul comes out with the causing powers. And let me say this. In the spiritual world, in the spiritual realms, countless souls fall prey to senator forces, finding themselves confined within confines of evil receptacles. Are we together? So this could be mystical bottles, cardinal stick in, 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 in malevolence or even every object like coconut. Your soul can be captured into a coconut. Your soul can be captured into a pot, into a, 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 a mystical bottle. Or even your soul can be captured and put into a papa. How do we call it in a different name? Papaya. That have been transformed into the vessel of, 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 of darkness. So the process by which these souls are ensnared, you cannot capture it in the physical. It is spiritual. Your adversary, eh? Armed with knowledge in the in, in, in concerning your date as well, they have different ways. They have their processing. Number one, let me say this to each and every one. Those that will listen, and those that will listen later. Do not expose your date of birth. To unknown person even sometimes those that you know me like this when you come onto your facebook when you check my facebook my date of birth is on it's not there i'll show you something how they come to capture your soul as i said they fly with these plantain leaves listen the moment the adversary or the enemy knows your date of birth and the specific name bestowed upon you at your creation, it can be read as a significant advantage for them because without robust spiritual defense built through divine armor and 
heightening protective energies such as these kind of spirit entities can easily manipulate you. So in the spiritual realms, your name is not just a label, but it holds power. Your name holds power. And in the realm of spirituality, your name is not merely a label, but it's, it's, it's a reflection of your soul. Your name is a reflection of your soul. And your soul in turn, in turn, resonates with your name. So this dynamic interaction signifies a deep connection where your identity and spirit are, I mean, intertwined through the essence of your name. So the significance of a name extends far beyond its mere use as an identifier. So names are often being believed to carry a deep symbolic and energetic energetic weight resonating with the essence of the individual to whom they belong so listen the connection between a name and the soul in the spiritual realm are rich and complex one emphasizing the powers of words and the significance of identity so your enemy will invoke your name three times at their demonic altar, they will chant, they will use your name. And a ritual that binds your soul to their will. So, they will call your name as maybe you are called John Doe. They will, after they have set up everything on their altar, and they will, call, they will chant your name three times. John Doe, John Doe, John Doe, come out from your body. We want you here. If you are not prayerful, you are not powerful, you don't have a sharp spirit protecting your soul, your soul will immediately join them. And when they do that, they don't do that only on just for the sake or they don't do that on any day but they do that on the day you were born on the day i said this yesterday on the day if you are born on wednesday tuesday friday saturday monday thursday on the day so it's very good to protect your name and the day you were born. Unless maybe you have been asked by a spiritual man to help you in prayers. Because names are very powerful. The Bible offers insight about this kind of spiritual warfare. So in Numbers chapter 23, 27 to 29, when Balaam instructs Balak, to construct all seven altars, requesting seven bulls and seven rams for a sacrificial offering. So as it is in the spiritual realms, anytime your soul will be captured, there will be a sacrifice that they will make. They will capture your name. They will capture, the, they will capture you through your, your date of birth. Not that alone. There are a lot of people, the moment... Hold on. This is mine. This money belongs to me. This money belongs to me. Okay. This money belongs to me. It is mine. I wipe it with my sweat. Okay. So the moment you give your money to an evil person, someone that you don't know, Someone that you don't know that he or she is evil and he wants or she wants your soul. The moment you give the person money like this, eh, you have taken part of your soul to the person. You have taken part of your energy given to the person. So now this money is not called money anymore. 
It is not called um, 10 Ghana cities. It's not called 5 Ghana cities. It's not called 20 pesos. But it is called John Doe. Because John Doe has given his money to a witch or evil person. Eh? So the, the evil person sees this money as John Doe. Eh? So you as call, you being called John Doe, the evil person is going to use this money against your soul to capture your soul, to destroy your business, to destroy your work, to destroy your marriage, to destroy the glory upon your life. Let me give you biblical one. When God told Adam that they can eat every tree in the garden, but this particular tree they shouldn't eat. When the devil came, the devil asked the woman, what did God say? God said we shouldn't eat this particular tree, but if we, the day we will eat, we will die. Now, God has given this tree to, the, to Adam and Eve. Now, they disobeyed God, but spiritually, God put Adam and Eve into the garden of Eden. We became dears. Now, the devil uses what they have, what they possess. The devil uses what they possess. He said, this particular tree, if you eat it, you shall not die, but you will be like God. So it has become part of them. So whatever that is part of you, when it goes out, to the wrong person and the person wants your life your soul the person is going to use that as a point of contact to capture your soul and to say or to cast spell or to say anything that they desire to bring you down hallelujah so if you give money to an evil person and you are not prayerful so, I, I am me particularly, I am very careful when I'm giving something out to someone. I'm a good giver. When I have, I'll give. When I don't have, I'll pray that God will provide for you. So, when you are to give someone money, even if it is hand to hand, even if it is true, um, digitalization if it is true any remittance through online pray about it because the moment the person when you send money to someone and the money comes on the onto the phone or the person or into the account of the person the, the so far as the money has come to the person and eh, when the person withdraw the money and the person want to use the money against something against you eh, be, because you'll be, at, uh, I mean, attacked or afflicted of what the person is coming to do because the money is coming from you. But when you are prayerful, you soak yourself into the blood of Jesus. Eh? You do all kind of um, spiritual bath. You do all kind of spiritual bath. They cannot use it against you. Now, the blood of Jesus Christ is always upon our life that protect us and the hand of God always protect us and the power of God always protect us in our life whilst we put on the armor of God but let me say this and let me say this I'm not practicing voodoo and I'm not a, 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 a voodoo practitioner I am a man of God but I'm giving you revelations mystery of the secret in the kingdom of darkness and how to live your life very well so if you are watching me and you are thinking that this man is, a, is, is not coming from God, well, thank you and God bless you. I'm not coming from God. I like it. Yes. But I, I'm saying this because I'm coming to teach you something that you have to know. This thing is called Eden fruit. I'm not the one who, 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 who manufactured it. This is a... It's, it's, a, it's a fruit. Yes. But let me tell you, it is a fruit, but demons and evil spirits fear it. This thing we, we used to cook. You can goggle right now. We used to cook. We used to prepare soup, stew. 
but spiritually, <laughs> spiritually, this thing, eh, when you have been using this each and every day in your life, your life, I don't know how to say, your soul will be a soul of riches and every good thing will come into your life. We don't use this thing alone. We use other things that is being mixed with. You can slice it into three how you want it. You can also cook it like that. And when you cook it, you cook it in a form as a tea. You see it as it, it comes like a tea. And when an evil person has taken something from you, money, as, as destroy your business or as taking something glorious from you. You can bath with this seven days or nine days. Then when you bath with this seven days or nine days, after you have recited a particular Bible verse in Psalms, you can use Psalm 8, you can use Psalm 11, you can use some 30, you can use some 92, you can use some 104, and you can use some 119, which is the longest Psalms in the, the, the book of Psalms. And you pray on it, and you use it to bath. Any financial attackers, whoever is attacking you financially, and also you are expecting... I mean, something from a company, a money, maybe an insurance or money or whatever. You get it? Yes. And this thing also can wash away any spell, any spell that an, a, a witch or wizard has cast on you. Any spell concerning your marriage, concerning your, your, your soul, concerning your, 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 your health, concerning your, I mean, your career. It's very, very powerful. So as I'm saying, they, 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 they do all these things to destroy your soul. They use money, not only money, Balam eh? make rituals hmm? on the altar. Right now, I don't know where your soul is, but I pray for you in the name of Jesus. That wherever your soul is, may your soul be delivered in the name of Jesus on any evil altar. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Take this and move with it. So, in the, in, the, in the realm of myth and legend, there are tales of mystical groups that in, in, in their secret gathering, they use, I mean, certain rituals to get control over, I mean, the spirit of another. Upon sensing your presence in their realm, they resort to, I mean, dispersing a malevolent powder when the enemy captured your soul eh? when the evil spirit ca captured your soul on their altar eh? they pour powder they blow powder upon your soul that aims to sap your strength leaving you i mean vulnerable within their their, their vicinity and they possess the power to, I mean, metamorphose you into any creature. They turn you into any creature of their own choice. The enemy can turn you into any creature after they have captured your soul into the in, in the in the realms of the spirit. They turn you into any creature. They transform your soul into a goat or a, a, a bird or fowl or Chicken as a symbolic gesture, signifying that you are embarked eh, for a future sacrifice or dismissed at their uh, behest. Furthermore, 
they can alter your form. Eh? They can alter your form into a, 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 a extremely small or tiny insect. And they'll put you into a bottle. They'll put you into a bottle. And you cannot come out unless someone has prayed for you. That's not all. They, 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 they tried to get something that belongs to you, as I said. Not only money the enemy use, not only your name they use, but they use your picture. They use your picture. I am telling you, anytime I will post my picture on social media, I pray on it. I pray on my picture before posting it on social media. Because anyone can go, if someone is looking for you, someone, any person can go and type your name and use your picture. Hallelujah. They use your pictures and make and they make sacrifice on your picture. They tied your picture with a black thread and put them in, in, in an evil pot and they make you they make sure that you will be you will be delivered for for any reason especially when they want to destroy you when they want to end your life so there are a lot of people walking under this sun their soul has been tied with thread and the black thread and the red thread has a meaning. When they use black thread to tide your picture, whereby they put on candles. Do you know a candle? We have candles. We have candles in colors. We have the, the red candle, the yellow candle, the black candle, the white candle. They put on and um, this put on white and black candle. And the, and, 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 and the red candle, when they want to kill you, when they want to suck your blood. A lot of people's pictures are on the altar of witches and wizards. I, I just wonder, people, and it's, it, it sounds so crazy that someone will, will take picture with with only bra and only pants and you see the body and the thighs and they'll paste it they'll post it on, on, on their social media what about what about that is everything okay you post your picture and you are expecting god to bless you you are selling yourself to the devil you sold your soul to the devil so the devil will come for your picture. There are other people also that post this because they are, they are, they are from the devil. Just to seduce people, to turn people's mind into, into, into negativity. Hallelujah. Are we together? So their practice extends to acquiring your likeness upon which they conduct sacrificial right they secure this image with a dark thread confining it within an accused receptacle ensuring that any chance of your rescue is thwarted they persist in this ritual daily with particular emphasis on the day marking your birth solidify the binding so you'll be bind you'll be bind by which always are they, 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 when you have your picture picture listen a picture of human is the soul a picture of a person is the soul of that person and they will tie it 
they will tie it with thread and they will tie it and they will put it in a pot in an evil pot ladies and gentlemen I pray for you in the name of Jesus may the Lord set you free listen not only your picture hmm, but your words the words that come out from your mouth you see as i'm sitting here preaching or teaching eh, i you cannot see my words i cannot see my words but any words that come out from my mouth which carries positive eh, will bring positive which carries negative will send out any negative energy and these negative forces will come for it and will use against your soul life and death is in the power of the tongue so they will, they will use your, your 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 words there are people where their soul has been captured through their words because whatever whatever that happened to them in the past they say in the past this happened this happened so the enemy will capture their soul with what they said that happened to it, to them in their past. So in the past, assuming let's talk of business, uh, this business and they, they went and, and did in the past, it couldn't work. So they, they will say it coming out from their mouth. I will not do this business again when I meet it. So you in the present and the future, you will not meet that business. A time will come that you will be needing it. You will not need it. And that means that the devil has captured that. What's that you say? And they use against your soul. Be very careful of what you say. Are we together? Now, I'm I I I am still teaching. Listen and listen carefully. Hmm? The Bible says that for as a ticket in his heart, so it is. A person's character is a reflection of their innermost thought and intentions so when you aspire to run a business or pursue a career your entire being your soul your mind your will and your thought are deeply invested in this end right so these principles extend to other aspects of life such as marriage and personal goals highlight highlighting how much your soul is connected to your thought and actions so jesus eh, elucidated this concept when he declared in matthew chapter 6 verse 21 he says that your heart is where your treasure lies so advising his followers to prioritize heavenly riches over earthly wealth. We accept that fact. Now, in any endeavor, your heart and soul are intrinsically linked to what you do and desire, reflecting a deep personal investment. So, when your endeavors encounter difficulties, be it in finance, be it in marriage, be it in business, be it in personal and um, destiny, it can be viewed as spiritual opposition. So this adversity may manifest as Financial strain, marital strife, leading to divorce or separation, or even a fear of commitment. That is gamophobia. So listen, in business, you might encounter challenges. And in the pursuit of your destiny, you could face setback and unfulfilled expectations. Listen, listen carefully. Just as the Lord has made each soul 
he has also woven it closely with the things we owe and the promises we keep. So, if a dark spirit, often knows, known as evil, decides to arm all these things that God has given to you, eh, its attacks start in the spiritual heavens eh, and then touches our daily on this earth that we live. So, if you find your work, your family, and other parts of your life in tumor, it could be a sign of a spiritual battle that needs to be fought. Remember, this link helps you to see that to overcome these challenges, you must fight both in the physical world and in the spirit. Every, every, every object in your hands and every relationship you hold dear as a piece eh, of your soul marks. Do you, get, do you get what I mean? Do you understand? I'm saying that anything that you have eh, is resonate to your soul. It represents your soul. Anything that belongs to you. So if you need marriage and marriage, you are in marriage, it belongs to you. So your soul. If you have a shop, a business, eh, it is your soul. The money is your soul. Your car is your soul. Your house is your soul. Your children is your soul. Do you get it? Eh? So what you owe dear has a piece. Eh? Has a piece of your soul's mark. Hmm? Am I communicating? So when a wicked forces aims to break these connections or possessions, the, the, the harm first comes from the spirit world and then shows itself in the physical world. So the spirit, the spiritual can stir up the physical part of your life, like your relationship, your things, and your goals. So when these areas you face hardship, it might be a call to a spiritual test that needs your prayer and your actions. So in essence, God has joined your spirit to your life's work and loves ones. So if a foe from the unseen world tries to harm these things, the battle starts there but affect your life here on earth. When you struggle in your work, with your loved ones in any part of your life, it could mean there is a spiritual fight happening that needs your attention. So this teaches us the way we can truly win and we can fight in both physical and spiritual. So beloved, remember that your battles are not just of the flesh, but also the spirit when the storms of life come, look to the Lord's strength. For in Him, you can overcome all these things. When you start identifying spiritual imprisonment, imprisonment in your life, eh, you see something like depression. There is a persistent negative emotions. Depression, persistent feelings of hopelessness, sadness and despair, anxiety, overwhelming of worry fear that doesn't seem to have a class cause and you saw so you see someone anyone that soul has been caged eh, also face behavioral changes you see them isolating themselves that person may start withdrawing from social activities friends and family preferring to be alone also, cause of also uh, we have what we call the uh, uh, addictive behaviors, eh? increased dependency on substance, alcohol and drugs, activities, gambling. Eh? All these things is, 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 is a sign that your soul is in cage. There are people they make rash decisions. They make rash decisions, making decisions that are harmful to themselves and others without apparent re uh, reason. 
All these things are signs. When you are facing spiritual disconnection, lost interest in faith, physical manifestation, unexplained physical illness, just name it and name it and name it. Are we together? But this evening, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Any soul that has been caged by the enemy, we come against it in the name of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Eden fruit. Before we pray, I want you to do this for me. You can get this, if you are in America, you can get this um, on Amazon. Just type Aiden, A-I-D-A-N fruit. You can just look for seven. Eh? Slice them. Cook it. After cooking it, pray on it. Use Psalm 119. Pray on it. Use Psalm 119 once. And use Psalm 8 seven times. Read Psalm 8 seven times. And Psalm 92 three times. When you cook it and you pray on it, use it to bath at midnight, 12 o'clock p.m. and 12 o'clock a.m. Sorry, at midnight. This. And as you are using it to bath, say whatever you want to say concerning your soul. There are a lot of men of God, they are struggling in their ministry. Hmm? They are struggling in their ministry. And I'm not saying prayer is not enough. Or prayer is enough. But you, you need to work on your soul. You need to work on your soul. And with this, you pray on it after you've done whatever I've told you. Then use it to bath. When you use it to bath, don't bath with soap. Don't bath with soap. After bathing, don't clean yourself. But once you are bathing, you'll be telling God what you want to see in your life. And you come back and give glory to God. My name is Apostle Father Emmanuel Okai. And God bless you. May his countenance shine upon you. Let us pray. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. We come against any forces of the enemy. We come against benevolent spirit that is chasing us to destroy us, that has captured us not to praise him. In the name of Jesus Christ, may our soul be delivered. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, have your way, have your way, deliver us. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever our soul is, wherever our soul has been captured, into a dungeon, into an evil pot, into a, a, an evil, evil, evil um, cauldron. Father, we come against it in the name of Jesus. Whoever is using our picture, whoever is using any gift that we are giving to them, and they are using as a point of contact against us, Father, we destroy, we come against them in the name of Jesus Christ. Rishi Kabra la sa kadaraba. Lo so kodunobu zi kabra li hedabe. Le se kadaraba zukodobu rikabra. Le se kadaraba zukodobu rikabra. La sa kadaradadadada. Lo so kodobu rikabra. Le se kadaradaba rikabra. Lo so kodododo zukodobu. Le se kadaraba rikabra. Lo so kodododo. We come against any forces of the enemy in our life. Whoever has taken our blessings, whoever has taken our money, whoever has taken our marriage, whoever has taken our career, whoever has taken our favor, whoever has taken our possessions, in the name of Jesus, Father Lord, deliver our soul from that enemy, in the name of Jesus, from any malevolent spirit, in the name of Jesus, we come against them by fire, by thunder, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. My brother, my sister. Listen. This thing is a fruit. But it has a spiritual power. I'm not the one who made it to. This is not the wood. It is a fruit. A real fruit. So don't say that this man of God is a 
is an evil man or is 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 not coming from God. When you say that thunder will strike you, yes, I know my God that I'm worshiping. Go and try this, even if you are facing bad dreams, things are not going well in your business. Contact me on Facebook Messenger. Contact me. I know that there are a lot of and in, in when you come to America or you go to America, and the doctrine of and the Americans when it comes to the gospel is different from the doctrine in Ghana by the same Jesus Christ. This thing is very powerful. Don't wait for the enemy to attack you. You can, you can use this thing to bath so that your soul will be free. The doctrine in America is different. And sometimes when people come online and see we, the Africans, preaching, I mean, saying all different kind of things, they become, wow, my pastor have not taught me this. My, my, I don't know about this. So I don't think it will work for me. You, you are deceiving yourself. You've allowed the enemy to capture your brain. Hello, Apostle Tonya Wright. Welcome. God bless you for joining their life. You, you, capture, you have allowed the enemy to capture you. Because this thing, go and Google. Go to Google and Google Aiden Fruit. And ask the, 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 the spiritual Eden fruit and ask us what 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 the the, the the Google will tell you. Use this if your work is not good. Even if you're a woman of God, a man of God, you cook buy this, cook it. Pray on it. Use Psalm 119. Pray on it. Psalm, one, uh, Psalm 8. Pray on it. And you come and thank God. Those people that are experiencing um, negative energies in their marriages, all of a sudden, your husband will quarry with you. Your wife will be quarry with you. All of a sudden, you'll be, you feel like you want to divorce or your marriage is not coming. This thing is so powerful. So when you're coming from America, when you go to Europe, they don't know anything about this. They don't know anything about it. But when you check the Bible, eh, even David says that God paid me with Aesop. Aesop, is it a stone? Aesop is a leaf. This is a plant. This is a plant of that has a fruit. This is a plant. Uh, this is a fruit of a particular plant. So go and try this. Try this. Favor. If you want favor, try this. There's a there's a way how to use it for favor. If you want to attract, I mean, people to like you, try this. Don't try this without praying. Don't do this without involving the name of our dear Lord Jesus Christ. And you come back and tell me it doesn't work. Otherwise, I'll use this thing on your head. <laughs> so please, go and use this. And you come and thank me. It does a lot of things. Do it with faith. And God will richly bless you. God bless you and have a wonderful night. Sleep well. Your soul has been protected. Look for communion wine. Look for communion wine. Yes. Prove over it. And use it to anoint yourself. Mm -hmm. As the blood of Jesus. And your life shall never be the same. Your soul is, where the, is what the devil needs. Your soul is what the devil needs. So the devil wants your soul. So don't allow the devil to capture your soul. Listen. You have been thinking negative about some people, about things that want to happen in your life. Any good thing that comes in your life, you see it as a negative thing, as being sent by the devil. If you want to do something, if you want to take a good step in your life, then all of a sudden, the, the distraction will come. Use this. Use this. Get this nine. 
and when you get this knife, get a slice of garlic, slice them into it, cook it. Don't cook the garlic, cook this. After cooking it, let it, I mean, be warm. Put the garlic into it, wait for some 30 minutes. Eh? You drink it as a tea. You, you drink it as a tea. Every day you want, you can put it in a bottle of a bottle and you'll be drinking it, drinking the editor for seven days. And you use some to bath. You use some to bath, you pour it on your head. That negative thinking will disappear because the forces, the evil forces, has captured your soul and they whispered into your ears. You have been cap captured. There are some people also, they have been tied to, to a tree. Your soul has been tied to a tree. So whatever that you are doing on earth is empty. It's empty. You, you are no one. You see the mad people walking. Eh? They are, they are, they are being, their soul has been captured and their head has been afflicted. So nothing is happening in their life. Go and do this. Pray with this. And you see the um, unusual miracles you will see in your life. And I believe that God will keep blessing you and listening to you. And if you talk about things that we, the African pastors, we do. African pastors are pastors that knows what is called spirituality. African pastors. Check the Bible. When you check the Bible in Acts chapter 19, verse 11 to 12, the Bible says that, and God works unusual miracle by the hand of Apostle Paul. When a prone and handkerchief was being touched the body and it's it, it being used to heal the sick and cast evil spirit away. So, do you say that you cannot pray on this and use it to, to, to do whatever you want to do concerning your soul, go and do this, and your life shall never be the same. God bless you. I will see you in the morning. Tomorrow is Wednesday. It's already Wednesday. I will see you in the morning, probably, God willing. And in the evening, we will meet as well. We are still dealing with spirituality concerning your soul. I prophesy upon your life. This new month, whatever that you are expecting from God, may you receive it. May you receive promotion. May you receive elevation. May you receive divine acceleration in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you, you, you desire, your heart desire, may you receive it. Anyone that is watching me secretly, may the person receive their, 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 their illness, any sickness, any chronic disease that has crippled you, paralyzed you. I pray that may the hand of God touches you and bring you out from the wheelchair in the name of Jesus to heal you in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord Jesus. For listening to the prayers of your daughter and your children. Amen. Peace. Shalom.